What's going on everybody? Mike here for ironinfidel.com and we are out in the shop today as you can see because it is wet and raining and all kinds of muddy out in the Arizona desert right now. So this puts us indoors but it gives us a really good opportunity to touch on a subject I've wanted to get with you guys about for quite some time. And that has to do with your modern duty belt whether your law enforcement or security is going to get you injured. However, there are a couple of ways you can avoid injury and stay on the job for a longer period of time. The first one of which being stay healthy. If you are morbidly or more abundantly obese, you're not doing anybody any favors, yourself or the public out there at large. If you're unhealthy to be at work and you uh, can't fit in a patrol vehicle, you probably need to take your job more seriously, take your health more seriously. The second way is going to be wearing more appropriate modern gear. And by more appropriate modern gear, I'm talking about getting into an inch and three quarter, a 175 style battle belt like this because it's just time to do away with the old basket weave and leather and two inch plus belts because they are just not relevant in the modern era. Anyone out there that's been in law enforcement in the military knows that change can be very difficult to get past. However, I'm going to give you some tips on that here in a minute and how to get these things approved within your department, agency, or the city or county as a whole. But I would be lying to you if I didn't say there were going to be some hurdles out there. The biggest hurdle is going to be your command staff. Surprise, surprise, because they still want you to look like Barney Fife out there in the street. Now, I do understand we've gotta have standards, we've gotta look the part. However, we have to move into the modern era, not only for mobility and the officers out on the street, especially when you think about ground fighting and a thicker belt, things like that come to mind, right? but also just modern lighter gear that's gonna stave off injuries and keep you in your job longer. Now, I'm sure you have seen me running around with my battle belt here on Iron Infidel over at Tactical Considerations, along with everybody else on the Iron Infidel channel here, but you may not have noticed the style of belt we wear, the size they are, and the style of buckle. And those are chosen for a specific reason. And there is some research and information out there that backs why you should wear an inch and three quarter belt up that we're gonna get into. All right, talking about that research and the why. There are certain styles of belts out there that have proven to be injurious via studies that have been conducted both by the Department of Defense and institutions out there that are public. So if you go onto Google and search law enforcement or police duty holster injury, you can go down a rabbit hole forever, but you're gonna see things probably from the Florida Neurological Institute police one and a Department of Defense study with Blackhawk that showed two inch and thicker belts and the more weight you have in your belt line, the more likely you are to get an injury to your lower body or back. And there is a reason for that because a two inch or thicker belt puts a lot of pressure on your hips, lower back and your legs when you're sitting in a car. That's why if you've ever been driving around in a two inch belt before for 15, 20, 30 minutes and you go to get out of your car, it feels like you're gonna trip or your feet aren't working. Well, that's because your legs went numb because of all that pressure the belt is putting on your hips and your lower body. Well, there are some states and municipalities out there where if you wear a two inch belt and you get an injury at work, it's considered presumptive that it was caused by that device or that is the mechanism of injury because they've been proven injurious, which you think would make cities and departments want to stay away from that, but they keep going to them for some odd reason, maybe it's tradition. So since nobody wants to get injured, what do you do? There's a couple of routes you can take. One, just wear whatever you want, and when IA calls your number, take the paper. Go in there, conduct your interview, answer yes, no, don't expand on anything, and just keep doing your thing because you're a king out there, right? But nobody wants paper. So the best route you can do is take the information you found on Google and present this to your committee that's in charge of uniforms and your command staff. You're gonna to wanna to sell this in a few ways to your command staff. One, most of your duty gear is probably made in Mexico or overseas. And companies like Blue Alpha, HSGI, Ronin, all these other companies are usually US made and some of which are very compliant, which means it's all US sourced. So that's a pretty big motivating factor, I think, for most people. Also, it's gonna lower injuries, which is gonna lower costs, which is gonna lower officers taking time off work and overtime but it's also going to be a morale booster. Those are the ways you're gonna to wanna to pitch this to your committees for uniforms or your command staff. Now, if that doesn't work, this next option gets a little spicy. And the reason I say this gets a little spicy is because you are going to bypass command staff and a committee, and you're gonna go straight across the street to human resources. What you are gonna look for at human resources is the person who is in charge of OSHA and risk management. Usually it's one and the same. 
Now, when you contact that person, you're going to want to do this verbally and via email with attachments that you found from your Google search from the Neurological Institute, the Department of Defense, and any other source you can find showing that two inch and above duty belts cause injuries. Now, the minute the person that's in charge of OSHA and risk management and work-related injuries hears that they can lower injuries at work, save money, and cut costs on medical bills and long-term care and things like that, generally things happen really quickly. But this also serves a second purpose. If they fail to take action, that's considered notice. So they have been notified that there is an injurious thing going on at work. There's a way to prevent injury and prolong careers and save the city money or the county money and then they failed to do anything. Well, that's evidence that can be used later in medical board hearings or in litigation if it comes to that. Either way, you're taking all of the steps necessary to inform everybody through your chain of command and the city, because the city and human resources is always above the police department, to ensure that you can get what you want and what you should have is modern gear that's gonna keep you safe. All right, let's get really clear about what type of belt you're gonna to wanna to look for. You are gonna to wanna to look for a one and three quarter inch or a 1.75 belt, preferably in Molly. There are a ton of companies out there, like I said, Blue Alpha Gear, HSGI, Ronin, AWS Gear, Ferro Concepts. You can get them in Molly or non Molly, but Molly is preferable. You're gonna want an inner and an outer belt. And the reason I say Molly is preferable is because when you put your pouches on there, they are going to stay there when you're in a struggle or a fight or anything like that. You don't want your kit moving around because it needs to be where your body knows it in if you have to go for it in an emergency. You're also gonna to wanna to get a Cobra buckle because they're just so well proven and there's no real reason to not have a Cobra buckle over some kind of plastic buckle. I know you may not like the look, but there's a reason that parachutist rigs use them. They're just the best we have to offer. Now, you can also get rid of keepers because you really don't need them when you have a proper battle belt that's been proven over the past 20 years, literally in battle, and it's just gonna work better than what you already have. It's gonna weigh less, it's gonna be thinner, and overall, more comfortable. When it comes to pouches and colors, your options are endless. You can get overt taco style stuff from HSGI, you can get duty style tacos, you can get S-Tac Kiwis or something that looks very kind of covert and standard to a duty style rig, but you're gonna to wanna to choose good stuff. And again, if you have the ability to, lean towards Molly belts because you can get ones that look really slick that are gonna hold your gear in place, but you can also default to a belt slide option or a kind of smooth belt. It's just not the best out of the two. And just a reminder, remember you always catch more bees with honey. Try to sell this as a positive. The city's gonna save money. The department's gonna save money. Morale's gonna be boosted because you're in better modern gear. You're gonna buy US made gear instead of stuff made overseas. And ultimately you're gonna save injuries to people and prolong their careers, saving even more money because you don't have to replace officers or pay for overtime. That's usually a really good selling point. And if you have to, get a hold of the person at HR. And generally when you start talking about injury and money avoidance, things usually happen fairly quickly. Now I really wanna know what your agency is issuing or are they even letting you wear the good stuff? Or are you still stuck in the Barney Fife era? Because that just sucks. Honestly, it's time for the leather and the basket weave just to go away unless it's a ceremony because it's 2024, why are we still wearing garbage from the 1950s? Make sure you get subscribed to the channel, check out ironinfidel.com if you're into fitness or shirts or the battle bottles. And as always, remember, stay healthy and stay hydrated.